On the Hebrew calendar, the month before the fall feast days is called Elul, and in Judaism, this month is traditionally associated with the theme of uh, repentance, or in Hebrew, Teshuvah. It's a time of introspection, reconciliation, and preparation for the fall feast. Many people think of repentance as simply turning away from sin, but the biblical concept of teshuvah is much deeper than that. Turning away from sin is certainly part of it, but the focus is different. Teshuvah means return. The goal is essentially to return to the Lord, that is to restore unhindered fellowship with Him. It is a divine invitation, if you will, to the prodigal son. That, that would be us, right? It's a divine invitation to come back home, to embrace the Father's presence, and that heart to return to God is the actual process or means by which we turn away from sin. Romans 6, 17 through 18 says, But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. So why is Teshuvah so important? Well, it's because drawing closer to God every day is the very purpose of our lives. A marriage relationship doesn't stop once the bride and groom say, I do, right? Marriage is a lifelong commitment in which a couple grows together through love, through um, sacrifice, through making mistakes and asking for forgiveness. Likewise, we should be constantly growing in our love and devotion to God, and not only because He's worthy of our worship, if that were the only reason, that would be enough, of course, but um, in addition to that, He's our bridegroom. He desires true spiritual intimacy with us, His bride. And, you know, for that reason, it's no wonder that Elul is an acronym for the phrase Ani Lodoti Vadoti Li, or in English, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Why is that significant? because the phrase is from Song of Solomon, which is the story of the bridegroom coming for his bride. That is the picture the Bible paints for us uh, when it comes to our relationship with God. So that's why this season is so important. This life is all about preparing for a marriage, and the month of Elul is a wake-up call, if you will. It's that week before the wedding day where uh, believers are to refocus on what's most important. The season of Teshuvah begins at the beginning of Elul and goes all the way to Yom Kippur, which is the holiest day of the year on God's calendar. Yom Kippur is a day of fasting, prayer, and repentance, um, and furthermore, it symbolizes the future day of judgment when Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will return and he'll judge the earth. And, you know, on that day, of course, we don't want to have any bitterness or jealousy or um, selfishness and pride in our hearts. So that's what this season is all about. It's leading up to that climactic day. And then, of course, after that day, you have Sukkot, which symbolizes the wedding feast of the Lamb. So when we observe these special times on God's calendar, what we're essentially doing is preparing for that future wedding day with Yeshua. So this season of Elul is like a wedding rehearsal. Yeshua is coming back for a bride who is without spot or wrinkle. So this is the time to get prepared. With that said, um, according to tradition, there are four steps of Teshuvah, and let's go ahead and go through them. Number one, we are to acknowledge and forsake our sin. The month of Elul is supposed to be a time of introspection. In fact, um, in Aramaic, the word Elul means to search. So during the season of Teshuvah, we are to ask God to search our hearts and to expose anything in our lives that offends Him. We can pray this prayer in Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead Lead me in the way everlasting. So you can ask yourself these questions. Do I really know Yeshua personally? 
Do I truly love God with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength? Do I truly love my neighbor as myself? Am I offending God by what I do, think, or say? Once your sins are highlighted to you, the first step is to forsake them. You have to truly desire to give them up. This is, of course, a difficult task for many of us, and it can result in an identity crisis as we begin to give up destructive habits or deep-seated character deficiencies. But, you know, God wants to deliver us from those things, and it's worth it for the sake of having an unhindered fellowship with God, a deeper connection with God. The second step is to regret the transgression. Our king desires humility and honesty. When we feel sorrow for hurting our spouse, parents, or um, close friends, they should be able to see our sincerity. If we've deeply hurt someone, it's not enough sometimes just to say sorry, right? Sometimes we have to fall on our knees. Sometimes we have to shed some tears. Regretting our transgression is a crucial step towards restoring a relationship. So the question is, if we do this with each other, how much more ought we to do this with God? When we pray and when we ask God for forgiveness for our sins, it should be sincere. We might consider physically bowing down and displaying genuine humility and regret for our offenses. Psalm 51 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Elul is a time to just be real. Being open and honest with your emotions, it can be difficult, but you know, it's important and it's necessary for healing and growth. Number three, confess the transgression and make amends with those whom you've hurt. 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, nothing is more liberating than coming clean. Confessing your sins to God and others is an essential step to teshuva. The Bible says that confession and prayer bring healing. And, you know, healing also comes by making amends with those whom you've sinned against. According to Matthew 5, 23-24, Yeshua said, So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. So you can acknowledge that you've hurt others all day long, but until you actually do something about it, it's basically meaningless. As James says, faith without works is dead. Therefore, you know, as much as possible, as, as much as it's within your ability to do, pursue to make things right with your fellow man. If you've sinned against your wife, you should bring home some flowers and a card. If you've sinned against your husband, you should make his favorite meal for dinner. If you've sinned against a friend, do what you can to make restitution. Take them out to lunch and, you know, buy their lunch and talk to them about the, the issues. You know, we ought to do what we can to make amends. That's what this season of Teshuvah is all about. Number four, accept God's forgiveness and move forward in faith. The problem that many people face when it comes to teshuva is that they don't follow through to this final step. People will often get stuck in regret and they never move forward. And that's exactly where Satan wants us. He tries to twist our emotions and he uses them against us to lead us into self-condemnation because he knows that if he can prevent you from moving forward, you will be rendered useless to God's kingdom. So don't believe Satan's lies. When you received the Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, you were adopted into God's family, and the Father loves you, and He is always willing to forgive you when you turn back to Him. Romans 8 1 says, There is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Biblical teshuva requires pressing on toward the goal. Therefore, Accept your forgiveness. Accept your identity as a child of God and a disciple of Yeshua, Jesus. Walk in faith and shalom, peace, and be comforted by the divine presence of God.
Philippians 3, 13 through 14 says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. May this season of Teshuvah bring healing to your relationships with your friends, with your family. May you have restored relationships with those uh, that you may have sinned against or people that have sinned against you. And may you grow closer to your Messiah during this season. I hope that you are blessed as you prepare for the fall feast days. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. I hope you were blessed by it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and please share your thoughts in the comments below. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell uh, so that you'll be notified when new content is posted like this video. I hope you guys liked the video again and thank you so much. Blessings and Shalom.